Hey guys, David here with Northwest Outdoor Adventures, and today I'm going to cover how to install a charging station onto your motorcycle using a relay. That way you won't have to worry about the precious juices of your battery being soaked up when your bike is off. Alright, let's take a look at the parts list real quick and see what we need to do this. So as you can see, I've got everything laid out on my table here. I'm going to quickly go over it from left to right. We've got our battery tender with a built-in fuse there. We also have some zip ties up there to keep things nice and tidy, some electrical tape. Also got a USB battery tender. We've got our relay and the plug that goes with it. And I've got a micro USB cable there since my phone is an Android and that's what I'll be using. Um, we've also got some 16 gauge red wire up there, various terminal connectors that we'll be needing. And then we've also got some dikes and some wire strippers and yeah, and I'm also using a RAM mount for my phone to mount onto my handlebars. Anything will really work for, you know, a phone mount, whatever your preference is. I really like the RAM mount, so I would suggest that, but it is a little pricey. And I've got links to everything down below, so feel free to check that out if you want to copy my setup. The next thing we're going to want to do is remove the battery cables from the battery. Remember, we always do the negative terminal first, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and then onto the positive, and then we're ready to start plugging stuff in. All right, so I've got everything laid out on my table here. I've already prepped all these wires. Um, and the big thing here is gonna be to follow this wiring diagram. Um, you'll also get one with the relay, but if you're not familiar with relays, I feel like this diagram should help you out quite a bit. And now I was lucky enough to have a plug that actually, when you turn the bike to run, it receives power. So I'm actually getting it from that plug, but it's very common for people to go through the headlight circuit or anywhere else that actually receives power when the bike is set to run. So anyways, like I mentioned, it doesn't also have to be a USB cable. You know, this could be for heated grips or heated vests, things like that. Anything that you might want to run off your battery. All right, so we've got our cables all prepped and ready to go, and now we can start installing them. Um, every bike is going to be different, so you really do kind of have to just take a look through it and see, see how it's going to really fit onto your bike. All right, so let's do that. All right, so once you've got your all your components in place and zip tied down, you're gonna wanna put the battery, hook the battery back up. So again, be careful anytime you're dealing with batteries and well, electricity in general, really. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and then I'll show you how I routed the cables and everything and kind of explain why I did what I did. All right, so I've got everything together now, and I tried to zip tie everything up as best I can. You can see I've got the relay underneath here, zip tied up right there. I'm a little hard to see, but you can still kind of see the wires coming out the back there, and you can get a good look at the, at the front there. So anyways, I've got it all wired up, got it hooked up to the battery, just like I had laid out before. And then I routed the cable for the USB back up through. Let me show you that. So we're coming off under here and I put it behind this coil. And it continues along, tucked it up through here. And then into this USB cable. And it goes up and up and through there and tucked behind there. And then I have it coming out of this little, this little accessory hole thing. And boop, there you go right into the, I mean, I'm using my phone to record it or else I'd have it plugged in, but there you go. So that's pretty much it. Um, I would also like to add, you know, when you're routing your cables, uh, always be wary of the handlebars when they turn and things like that, that you're not pinching anything. And as far as weatherproofing goes, it kind of depends on the conditions you're riding in, but uh, it never hurts to heat shrink. If you have the option to heat shrink uh, your connections, I'd go ahead and do that. Um, I use some electrical tape in some of the areas that I knew we're prone to getting wet, but other than that, I mean, it kind of just depends on your own personal preference and how, how much of a risk taker you are, I guess. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, or if I totally messed it up or anything, uh, let me know. Uh, other than that, you know, hope this helped you guys out. And again, check the links in the description if you're interested in some of this stuff. Um, I just used it on 
our trip down to uh, Vegas and the Grand Canyon and all that, and and it worked great, no issues, and so the products are good enough, I guess. <laughs> all right, thanks for watching. Happy riding, guys.